a family member gifted me this. This is a piece of an old turtle's shell and I think it looks amazing. Not right now, but let me show you something. I have two small pieces of this stuff and on the surface it doesn't look like much, but if you put a light underneath, wow, that looks amazing. It's like molten lava or something. It looks incredible. And if I turn the lights off, it looks even better. It's full of this incredible detail in layers. I think I can get that detail out if I create a polished product with this. By the way, this piece of shell and the other one that I showed you is 120 years old and I got it from a family member that escaped Cuba in the 70s and brought this home with her. I realized that it is illegal to buy or sell anything that is made out of turtle shell and I think that's a great, great sanction on all the poachers and all people who disregard and don't pay respect to the animal that is endangered. And I made a whole video about this and if you're interested, check it out. Anyways, back to the product creation. I've always found the idea of creating heirlooms to be really great and a really interesting and super positive message. I want to take my best shot at creating an heirloom that can be passed down for generations and that is made out of a material that is very, very special, very rare and almost impossible to acquire. Since it can't be bought and you cannot sell any products created from it, I think the only way one can acquire such a thing is for it to be given. So this is my first shot at creating a product that can last generations and that can be cherished. Kinda high standards to live up to. I've decided to give this product to my little sister for Christmas and can you guess what it is? It's going to be a comb, a hair comb, and I'm messing up the design so much and even though I know I'm not going to use it, I'm still going to finish this one. Anyway, I made like four other ones and this is the one I ended up choosing. Okay, so this is the final design that I'm going to use. I need to place this on the turtle shell in a way that wastes as little material as possible. There are a bunch of problems with this shell piece and you can see it has one straight edge that was probably cut or something, I don't know. And, and you can see this part is delaminated, so I need to fix that somehow. The whole surface of the shell is kind of scuffed and dirty, like years of dirt and whatever. There's also this piece that seems to have received some impact. I don't know how or probably when it was on the turtle it was growing in a weird way. So it doesn't look nice and I think that the structural integrity of the shell is way weaker here. So I need to place the comb template in a way that it doesn't intersect any of these problematic areas. Like the surface scuff is alright, I can polish that away, but I can't deal with any structural deficiencies. Or at least I don't know how I'm going to deal with them if I encounter them in the future. So here you can see me marking out the outline and I seriously need to get this right on the first try because I have very little of this material. I'm going to be using a handsaw, so I need to make sure that my lines are visible. That's why I removed the template and kind of strengthened the lines with a permanent marker. I think that I will be able to see them more clearly. So this is going to be the final placement. I think I managed to nail it and waste as little material as possible. Only on the places that have like kind of structural issues or something. Okay, now it's time to put in some elbow grease and get this thing cut out. I've made the incredibly stupid decision to do this in my own room. But anyways, I didn't realize it yet. I'm going to be using a hacksaw and this may not look like the best tool, but trust me, it is the best tool. I've experimented on the smallest of pieces and this seems to grip the right amount and be precise enough for this project. I thought this project was going to be similar to leatherworking in complexity, but it actually ended up being a bit easier in complexity, but a bit difficult in 
and anything else. So basically it's more along the lines of working with plastics or polymers and since it is a polymer but also an animal product it has some very strange properties. One of these properties is that it smells incredibly bad. Like burning hair times a thousand bad. And I was doing this in my room and couldn't get the smell out for weeks. It's absolutely disgusting. And here, as I predicted, there is a structural failure point. Since it was impacted or something happened, the turtle shell just breaks apart. But everywhere else it's pretty solid and it looks sturdy enough to produce something that can, I think, hopefully last a lifetime. Finally, I've made it around the whole shell and now it's time to file down the corners and get everything lined up and looking beautiful. It was kind of hard to film this since it is so small and you have to hold it so steady with your hand. Wow, I'm glad that went well, but after this I made a crucial mistake. Right there, I gouged out 2 millimeters more than I needed and I cannot put it back. So it's not going to be perfect, but I need to make it as beautiful as it can be. So I exchanged a bit to something a bit smaller and was a bit more precise on the next few holes. Trust me, it's not as bad as it looks. I'm only two millimeters outside of my lines and I think I can make it work. And this is the best I can do. I think it turned out great, but I still need to sand down all the imperfections and all the edges. This will also make my mistake a bit smaller, hopefully. We're at the halfway point of the video and the product is coming along and I think that you can get a good sense of what my channel is about or at least what this video is about. I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content that I create. Currently I only have 36 subscribers so any feedback will be appreciated. As you can see the thickness of the teeth will be a bit different but that's fine because I think that it gives to the natural look of the product. But I'm going to need to file down every single edge to the lines that I drew previously to make it as uniform and as good looking as I can. So I attacked the product with some sandpaper and tried to be as precise as possible and this was absolutely horrendous, like dust flying everywhere, the smell was unbearable and I had to do everything as quickly as I could to maintain my sanity. I worked for about 10 minutes on every single tooth, so it took a bunch of time, but in the end I think it turned out great looking. This fine dust of turtle shell and also the sandpaper was all around my room, but especially on my Weiss. So here you can see me wiping it off. And I think this is one of the most satisfying things along the project. So, you be the judge. This is the closest I can get to uniformity with my cheap hand tools and a lot of work. Now, let's see if I can extract all that amazing detail that was in the shell by just polishing the top. First of all, I'm going to be using a rougher sandpaper to get out all the deep scratches and all the muck and dirt. Then I'm going to hit it with something a bit softer and uh, we'll see where it takes us. That's one side done. Now let's move on to the next. And this is gonna be a bit easier and I think that I'm not going to go as deep because the turtle shell is as thin as it is and I can't afford to waste any more material. So uh, light sanding and then basically it's done, right? 
Oh no, I can't call it that early. I need to add something a bit more personalized. So I decided that I'm going to engrave it. I'm going to be using these ball cutters. The smaller one is about 0.5 or I think one millimeter in diameter and the larger one is like three times that But I ended up using only the smaller one and I need to be super precise in this process so I made sure to sketch out everything first and uh, Not start work until I was happy with my design there are two stages to this process. First of all, I'm going to be making an outline, then I want to engrave her initials into the comb. Now, unfortunately, the initials I couldn't get right on the first try, the second try, or the third. So, I started with the outline and added some texture to the whole comb and then redrew the design until I was happy with it. And it took a bunch of tries, but I think I ended up with something that is usable. But here you can see me sketching out the outline with uh, the ball cutter and then making my way around the whole perimeter of the comb. After this, I'm just going to make some little holes and then sand off the tops so that it has a nice uniform texture and I think it adds something a bit more interesting to the whole look of the comb. Here I'm trying to keep a steady hand and since the ball cutter is so small, any small fluctuation in my hand movements will cause a serious error. So it's going to have to be really precise and I have to pay a lot of attention. Since this is the like second time I'm doing any engraving, this is really challenging for me. But I think that with these limited skills I could get something that adds some more value to the whole look of the piece. And these are the tiny hole textures that I was talking about. And it was pretty simple to get these done, but the sanding part was a bit more time consuming. And I think that this texture will not hide the detail that is hidden within the whole piece. And if I polish it nicely, that I can extract that. So, this is the texture, and I need to wash off all the dirt and all the dust because it has settled into every nook and cranny of the whole piece. And after this, I think I can be confident in finishing the initials. So there you go, that's the texture finished, and I think I can improve my washing and I will attack it with a toothbrush, but that's done. Okay, now on to the initial. I'm keeping my hand very, very steady and moving as slow as I can to stay within the lines and to get the initials right. Now after this, there's only a final sanding and some polishing, but I will do that off camera. Okay, now before I show you the final product, let's check out if this thing works. Yep, it pretty much does. Before I show you the beauty shots, I would like to ask you to subscribe. Thanks. Okay, now for the beauty shots. This was the first time trying out a lot of different skills and it was a difficult challenge to say the least. But still, I think I have succeeded in creating something that can last a long time and that can be used to great effect. Thank you so much for watching my video. This is the best that I could come up with. I am very pleased with my results and I hope you are too. If you have any concern or questions, please put them in the comments below. Thank you and bye bye.